Pokemon lore has always been filled with playground rumors and unanswered questions since the very beginning. Today, we're peering into the world of Pokemon theories. And what better place to start than with one of the most mysterious Pokemon types of all time, Psychic. Make sure to put on your thinking caps, because we want to find out which Psychic type theories are head scratchers and which ones are mind blowers. I'm Kyle with Pokebinge, and these are Psychic type Pokemon theories, BS to truth bombs. Today we're going to start with the least likely theories and work our way up to the mind-blowing truth bombs. For our first category, you'll believe it when you see it, but there's not much to see here. These theories are BS. Starting off with Mew3. Mew3 is the theory that there is another form even more powerful than the perfect Mew2. This old school theory makes sense on paper. In a game with three stage evolutions, there is reason to believe that there would be a final form to round out the Mew trio. But the only evidence of this being a thing is within the manga where Red's Clefairy fused with Mew's DNA to become the self-proclaimed Mew3. This was the first and the last look at this design which was a joke to begin with. Moving on to Deoxys was hit by the ultimate weapon. This theory was born from its Ruby Pokedex entry. Quote, the DNA of a space virus underwent a sudden mutation upon exposure to a laser beam and resulted in Deoxys. Based on this, the theory goes that the ultimate weapon was that laser. The ultimate weapon itself was only launched once successfully 3,000 years ago. Also a failed launch during the events of X and Y. Neither time did it get near to Hoenn, where Deoxys can be found. And it's not even a laser, more of an energy cannon. More likely was a regular laser trying to break up incoming meteors. Our next theory is Kadabra was a human child. This theory is an oldie but a goodie. Stemming from the Pokedex, there are several variations of this idea. The first being, quote, it is rumored that a boy with psychic abilities suddenly transformed into Kadabra while he was assisting research into extrasensory powers. In Fire Red, it says a boy just woke up this way. In Sun, it claims it was a boy who had psychic powers and could not control them. The only piece of evidence for this theory is already inconsistent. Was it a regular kid, a science experiment gone wrong, or a prodigy too powerful for his own good? Likely none of the above. The Legends Arceus Pokedex entry states this overtly. Quotes, there are rumors that a child with mystical powers became Kadabra. However, this remains remains unverified. This rumor is just that, an in-universe rumor about Kadabra. There likely was never a boy to suffer this fate. Now let's round this category out with a really weird theory. Mr. Mime is Ash's father. This theory is absolutely ridiculous, but manages to pull some interesting evidence. This was mostly a joke in the face of Ash's mom's appearance in the Sun and Moon anime, where Mr. Mime is a traveling companion to Ash's mom. So yes, this theory is is a glorified Mr. Mime did Ash's mom joke, but it also stands to reason two other factors that are strange about Ash. One, he doesn't age, and two, he has Pokemon-like abilities and durability. Ash is able to take hints and communicate with other Pokemon almost as if he was half Pokemon himself. But this is where the coincidences end. His Pokemon-like abilities are as easily explained by his role in the show. An unaging plot-armored protagonist. His durability and youth are not proof of him being half Pokemon. Secondly, in recent episodes, his father's reveal was teased once again before retiring Ash from the show. The few things we know about Ash's dad is that he is a Pokemon trainer and Mr. Mime is not taking on the Pokemon League. What is interesting about this theory is the mystery surrounding his dad. We don't know. It could be Giovanni, it could be Professor Oak, or some unnamed mystery trainer. But with such a lack of clarity, strange theories can be considered. Which brings us to our next category. These theories might be onto something, but probably not. These theories are full of holes. Starting out with Cosmog is Necrozma's missing piece. For this theory to make any sense, here is a recap of the lore between the two Pokemon. First, Necrozma worked together with the denizens of Ultra Megalopolis. Necrozma was a literal beacon of light there. The people eventually betrayed Necrozma, trying to steal the source of its light. This backfired on the humans, destroying Necrozma's light dragon form, and sent it into a rampage seeking light to devour. Cosmog is the first form of the evolution line for Solgaleo and Lunala, but there is not much concrete 
great lore surrounding them both. There is a similarity that they share with Necrozma. They both can create wormholes into Ultra Space. Also, they both are not explicitly Ultra Beasts themselves. Perhaps something different. Necrozma is able to fuse with either and become Ultra Necrozma, a being of pure light energy. This stands to reason that after using Lunala or Solgaleo and consuming their light to become Ultra Necrozma, they must be the missing piece. There are still several issues with this theory in itself. One, the nature of the fusion is largely parasitic. This is not like Kirim forms. This is Necrozma taking over. Next, the Light Dragon Ultra Necrozma does not remain whole again. Again. One could extrapolate that perhaps it needs both forms to become fully whole. This remains to be unseen, however. Lastly, it was theorized that the Z crystals were the missing pieces of Necrozma. This makes the most sense and is the only explanation explicitly stated in game. Likely, the Prism Pokemon is missing the Prism's Z crystals scattered around Alola. Next, Starmie is the result of the Deoxys virus. Reddit user Gaffa Cakes makes a compelling argument for a direct connection between between the Starmie line and Deoxys. First, they have similar psychic abilities in both moves and flavor, like sending radio waves into space or the ability to regenerate. Also, they share the same spherical center, both crystalline in nature. They go on to speculate that a Deoxys virus infected a simple starfish long ago. These hybrids went on to breed and become the modern day Staryu and Starmie we know today. A variation of this theory is that Staryu and Starmie are the aliens entirely, that Deoxys is a mutant Starmie, not the other way around. This theory seems promising, but is more coincidence than anything else. There is nothing to suggest that a virus had any hand in Starmie or Staryu. The Crystal Center is shared, but there are several design choices in Pokemon that seem related, but are just stylistic choices more than direct connections. Lastly, the regeneration and talking into space seems more inspired by the design than a direct link to Deoxys. Psychic types often share similar move pools, and real-life starfish regenerate themselves, and talking to stars could easily be a play on the starfish design. Muna referenced in Generation one. In Gen 1, there's a trainer with the dialogue, quote, the Pokemon here are so chunky. There should be a pink one with a floral pattern. Five generations later, we get a Pokemon to fit that exact description. This theory is fairly shallow, as this is the extent of it, and there are really only three ways to look at it. One, this was fully intentional. The dialogue was an Easter egg to tease the future design of Muna. Alternatively, a designer later down the line knew about this line and decided to make it a reality. Lastly, and most likely, Likely. It's all a coincidence. The description, although accurate to Muna, is more something a child would want in a Pokemon anyway. Muna most likely was designed independently. The connection is possible, but unlikely. And the description of a pink one with a floral pattern is far too vague to definitively connect it to Muna with no other evidence. Next, we have Hoopa is saving Pokemon from doomed universes. Hoopa, the mischief Pokemon, is painted to be a greedy collector, one who hoards notable Pokemon for no other reason than it can. Reddit user I from Mars writes that Hoopa is actually a savior of legendaries from doomed timelines. The first piece of evidence is that when entering Mirage spots, it's not a remix of battle themes, but are the exact themes from their original games. This could imply that these Pokemon are actually from a different dimension altogether. This runs parallel to the arc in Aura's Delta episode, where it's based around the character Zinnia trying to save the universe from a meteor, a meteor that had destroyed other universes. The idea is Hoopa used its abilities to save Pokemon from doomed universes instead of greedily collecting legendaries. This theory fits into the games well, but doesn't really have any current evidence. Which brings us to our next category. The possibilities for psychic types are endless, but some are more likely than others. Here we get into some solid Pokemon lore, with theories that are possible. Let's start with Jirachi created Mega Evolution for Rayquaza. Here we continue our Hoenn remake kick with another theory. Amino user Agent Raven and Reddit user Flarestrum88 make several smart connections between plot points in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire and Jirachi, each point to the possibility that Rayquaza was granted the ability to Mega Evolve with its unique Mikaida organ. 
Ronin. This theory takes into consideration Pokemon's ancient history. Within the third chapter of Xenia's story of Rayquaza, she explains how humans made a collective wish for Rayquaza to gain the strength to best the ceaseless conflict between Kyogre and Groudon. This wish in the story was made a thousand years ago. In the Pokedex, it explains how Jirachi, the wish-granting Pokemon, only reveals itself every thousand years to grant wishes. There is a strong connection here and the timing works perfectly. That said, there is not any direct connections between the two. There was nothing in Xenia's story about going to Jirachi directly. Jirachi doesn't make an appearance at all in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire's story as well. It granting Rayquaza the Mikaido organ is just a guess, but a really good one. Our next theory is Wubbuffet is a rogue unknown. Reddit user Irurito posts about the similarities between Unknown and the Wubbuffet line. This is all based around the resemblance between their tails and Unknown. Unknown have one eye and a black body, while Why Not's tail is black with one eye. Why Not and Unknown also behave similarly as both of their Pokedex entries talk about the habit of grouping together to gain power. They also share the same typing of pure psychic types. Lastly, they have extremely limited movesets. There are also several other small connections between the two, such as naming conventions, illusion motifs, and abilities. As far as moves go, Unknown only learn hidden power, and neither Wubbuffet or Why Not can learn hidden power. Also, where did the rubbery body come from? It's likely that they're simply separate Pokemon. This theory has many connections, but nothing concrete to put them together. This is not the strangest occurrence in Pokemon, and it does remain possible. Moving on to the theory that Victini is an atomic bomb. This theory makes some dark connections between real life history and game design. The idea that Victini represents an atomic bomb. One observation is the victory motif from the name, the hand gesture and head shape. This was used in World War II to denote victory, including the atomic bomb of Japan. Secondly, the Pokedex describes Victini as having unlimited energy, like nuclear power's seemingly limitless energy. Lastly, there are direct ties to the US. Victini is found in the bottom of Liberty Garden Tower, which is in reference to real-life Liberty Island, and there are other ties such as ability and signature moves. Though there are reasonable explanations that point away from the bomb theory, V could reference the beginning of Generation 5, V representing 5 in Roman numerals. The shape is reminiscent of an apple carving technique popular in Japan. And lastly, the only real reference to being a US weapon is its location in the New York-based region. This could all be a coincidence. Rounding out this section, we have Screamtail is an ancient Jigglypuff. This theory is quite nearly canon. The Pokedex makes a direct connection between it and Jigglypuff. It shares the fairy typing, has similar moves, and looks exactly like a past reimagining of Jigglypuff. The only evidence we have in the Pokedex is a paranormal magazine claiming it is a 1 billion year old version. Each paradox form is heavily implied to be a version from a different time, but never outright says it. That's what keeps this theory from being ranked any higher. The counter argument is that Paradox Pokemon are actually imagined into existence. As of the time of writing, Paradox Pokemon remain shrouded in mystery, keeping Screamtail as a possible ancestor to Jigglypuff, but still not confirmed. Now, you don't have to be psychic to predict what's next. This next section is made up of theories that are probably true. Starting out with Mew is the first Pokemon. Mew is commonly cited as the first Pokemon. When people say this, it generally means the first by biological Pokemon. The evidence of this is supported by the in-game scientists of the game and is stated in the Pokedex. Mew can learn almost every move in the game and is the only other Pokemon besides Ditto to learn Transform. Not to mention, it canonically contains the DNA of each Pokemon. The point of contention in the Pokemon lore is Arceus, because Arceus is said to be the creator of everything, hatched from an egg before anything existed. So this would disqualify Mew as the first Pokemon. There are several theories attempting to explain the inconsistencies here. To include Mew as first, Reddit user Dakata provides this theory, that a Mew eventually became an Arceus, which in turn went back in time to create Mew. While this theory is possible, there is no way to prove that's what happened, at least with the current lore that we have. Even if Arceus came first, Mew is most likely the first biological Pokemon after all. Next we have the Cosmog line are Ultra Beasts. The Cosmog line have all the makings of an Ultra Beast. Its cry contains a sound that all Ultra Beasts have, each stat is an odd number, and they canonically come from Ultra Space. 
It's hinted and theorized throughout the game that the Cosmog line might be an Ultra Beast, although it's never outright said. The only key difference is the Cosmog line lacks Beast Boost, the ability that each other Ultra Beast has. Lore-wise, this can be explained by the line's ability to synthesize Ultra Wormhole energy, the same energy that causes Ultra Beasts to go berserk. Does this one difference constitute them being different altogether? It could. While both Ultra Beasts and Cosmog are denizens of Ultra Space, Space, Cosmog's final forms can open Ultra Wormholes where the beasts cannot. There are minor differences that could separate the two parties. It all comes down to what you mean by an Ultra Beast. If it's a Pokemon that comes from Ultra Space, then yes, it's an Ultra Beast. If it's only the Pokemon with Beast Boost, then no, Cosmog is not. Our next theory is that Slowpoke is omniscient. This theory looks at Slowpoke, who is oftentimes the butt of a joke. Widely circulated, this theory seeks to explain how one of the dopiest Pokemon can become one of the smartest. The Pokedex explains how absent-minded Slowpoke reacts to its environment. At first glance, you would guess Slowpoke was too stupid to understand anything. Considering all Slowpoke are psychic right from the start, people speculate that Slowpoke is weighed down by the weight of its intellect, not its stupidity. The theory states that Slowpoke is so intelligent that it's omniscient. All-knowing, knowing everything all the time ensures that Slowpoke is unable to do much else besides process its environment. This theory states that the bite of Shelder doesn't shoot Slowpoke into brilliance, but actually dumbs it down. This theory is a fun spin on the conventional idea of the dumb Slowpoke. While not explicitly canon, this is a solid explanation of Slowpoke's behavior. The Pokedex would have you believe that the toxins from Shelder's bite is what creates the intellect, but Slowpoke had psychic abilities the the whole time. Next we have the Lake Spirits Guide Humanity. The Lake Spirits are adjacent to the Creation Trio and are rumored to have ambiguous powers over the shape of the Pokemon world. Uxi represents knowledge, Mesprit represents emotion, and Azelf represents willpower. All three Lake Spirits are said to have hatched from the same egg and granted humans their control over mind. All three have shown to manipulate mental states in raging Pokemon such as Dialga or Palkia and have rumored to be able to do this with humans too. This is is most likely the case, but like all things surrounding the creation of the Pokemon world, it's hard to say anything for sure. Rounding out this category, we have Rabska's soul is in its ball. This is one of the newest Pokemon theories. This theory comes from the Pokedex, which claims that the true body of Rabska is thought to reside in the ball. This lines up with what we know of Rabska. The insect part of the Pokemon barely moves, implying this body is dead. This Pokemon may also be based on the Egyptian scarab beetle Face God, who represents the rising sun and the renewal of life. The ball representing the sun and its renewal of life. The only other dex entry we have contradicts the first. The Violet entry claims that an infant sleeps in the ball, that Rabska is rocking the infant so it sleeps. This could be evidence that something else is going on entirely. Perhaps the ball is similar to an egg sack, or it could be in the same idea of renewal of life, how when the death of its body, it is reborn as an infant inside of the ball. Hard to tell, but this would not be the first hollow ectoskeleton Pokemon. Finally, we get to our last category. The truth is out there. Our last theories are the unexpected truths of the Pokemon universe. These psychic Pokemon theories are the truth bombs. First off, there are multiple Mewtwo. This theory has two different meanings. The first is from the anime. There's the movie Mewtwo of Mewtwo Strikes Back and Mewtwo Returns. Then there is a second Mewtwo in Genesect and The Legend Awakened. The key difference is in personality and voice. Each Mewtwo is distinctly different here, and this is explicitly stated by the later film's director. In the games, however, it's tricky. The only way that Mewtwo is obtainable is by facing it in the Cerulean Cave. The other times can be explained by bending space and time to catch Mewtwo. There is one other place that Mewtwo can be captured organically. That's in X and Y in an unmarked cave. While it is entirely possible that it is the same Mewtwo who had traveled to Kalos, it is not impossible for it to be an entirely different Mewtwo. There have been other legendary synthetic Pokemon to be made multiple times, such as Silvali, so it could be the case here. Although multiple Mewtwo remains possible in game, within the anime, it is a reality. Moving on to Wubbuffet is 
its tail. Wubbuffet is blasting off again, and this time with a solid Pokemon theory. This theory is that the body of Wubbuffet is just a decoy, and the true body is the tail. The Pokedex documents several odd behaviors surrounding Wubbuffet's tail. It defends its tail, trying to never receive a hit there, and if it does, it tries to take down the opponent with Destiny Bond. The tail is said to have a secret, or at least the Pokedex teases. The big secret surrounding the tail is simply that Wubbuffet is the tail. It's not a huge revelation, but most likely the truth without relying on other connections. It doesn't have to rely on any assumptions to make a compelling theory. Our second to last theory is that Calyrex's steed is a dead Galarian Rapidash. This theory is that there is a crucial piece of information missing from the lore behind Calyrex's steeds. How are the two horses related? They have a very similar role to Calyrex, where Calyrex Rider can enhance the abilities of either horse Pokemon. The theory states, once upon a time, it was the same Pokemon. The Crown Tundra, where Calyrex resides, is based on real life Scotland. The national animal for Scotland is the Unicorn. The only other Unicorn Pokemon in the Crown Tundra is Galarian Rapidash, which clearly represents a Unicorn. This theory states that the two forms of Calyrex are not two different horse Pokemon, Pokemon, but the same horse Pokemon. Glass Trier, the brute force of its corpse, and Spectrier, the wandering spirit. This explains cleanly why there are two rider forms of Calyrex. In death, Calyrex's steed remains loyal only to Calyrex. It is possible that Calyrex has two different steeds, however this doesn't make any sense when considering its inspiration. Calyrex takes inspiration from several horse riders like King Arthur, Brian Boru, or cavalry soldiers. In pop culture, it's almost always the single loyal trusty steed. Old Reliable. There being two unrelated powerful horse Pokemon is possible, but goes against what we know about Calyrex and its inspiration. Finally, we get to our last theory in the Truth Bomb category. Unknown are the hands of Arceus. This theory is another take on the creation of the Pokemon universe and is heavily implied by both the games and the anime. The Pokedex paints Unknown with mystery. Odd powers begin to emerge when Unknown begin to gather. This power seems to be the ability to construct reality itself. In the anime, there are instances in the third movie where Unknown create illusionary reality. Later on in the anime, Unknown are spilled out of nothing as Dialga and Palkia fight. This is noteworthy, but doesn't tie Unknown to Arceus directly. As far as direct connections, the Azure Flute makes the same sound as Unknown over radio waves. This is the same flute to summon Arceus. The Pokedex states that Arceus built the universe with its 1,000 arms. Considering Arceus has no literal arms. It has been connected to the unknown being metaphorical arms for Arceus. In Heart Gold and Soul Silver, you can witness Arceus and the unknown working together. The player is given the choice between Giratina, Palkia, or Dialga. Then, unknown surround Arceus, and together they're able to manifest a ruler of reality from nothing. This theory is never explicitly said, but it is heavily implied. Unknown are always described as powerful, strange beings. The connection to Arceus explains how single unknown are weak, but together shape reality. This theory solves some questions, but also brings just as many to the Pokemon world. With unknown absent from mainline games for the past two generations, there's still plenty of mystery to be solved. But let us know in the comments section what your favorite psychic type Pokemon theory is. And which ones do you think are true? Make sure to hit that notification bell and binge our other Pokemon videos. And tell us what Pokemon type we should cover next. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.